Hey everybody, my name is Yona. I am a fourth year student at CSPM. And in today's video, I am making a series with Diksha um, about advice and tips to help you guys be excellent externs as you progress your uh, externships. Um, so this is gonna be a series and there's probably gonna be three to four parts to the series because we have a host of different things to talk about with you guys. I made literally a list here with Diksha where um, we're going to share our thoughts on this list uh, with a lot of the things we're going to talk about today. So um, just to jump off, we're, uh, I'm going to just give you guys seven quick points. Uh, I'm going to try to be brief as possible, but I want to make this video as helpful as possible too. Um, so with the first point being paperwork. Uh, so as you guys know, you're probably, a lot of you guys who are watching this video are probably receiving a lot of paperwork from your different externships as you go through them in the next few months. And so you want to get that paperwork done as early as possible. Do not wait the last minute. Um, it it's important because there's a lot of deadlines to these paperworks. They're not the deadlines are usually maybe two, maybe four weeks before um, going to that externship. So you want to be prepared for that. And also it it makes you look really good because um, if the front office can see, administration sees that you're really on top of it it starts to look good in your end, especially as an incoming extern. So get your paperwork done early. That's the first point. Second point, uh, taking notes on new things daily. Um, during externships, you're learning quite a lot of things and you're gonna be you're gonna be learning things for the first time every day as you progress through certain programs. And for me, it was really important for me to carry a notepad. I always carried a small notepad pad in my white coat and I always took notes on anything that I learned during the clinic or during surgery or whatever a doctor said. And then I would take those notes and then input it into OneNote or Notability on my computer and make sure I keep, kept it organized for that program. And then I would review that later on. So it's important to have some sort of note-taking method in my opinion in order to keep track of everything you're learning that day. Um, third point, reading an article daily. Um, so. There's, the, there's this whole saying about reading an article a day, uh, and that's great. If you can read an article a day, good on you. Uh, for me, it was a little bit harder to read an article a day. However, um, I think reading an article on things you learned that day and making it more relatable to what you experienced was way easier for me to digest that article and for me to sort of retain that info. I, I think relating it to something is more beneficial for me and my standpoint and just a better learning method. Um, if you guys wanna apply that, I think that could help you as well. Um, but if you're reading an article daily, I think that's gonna be very helpful as you progress. Um, and we might make a video about how you should read an article and how you should sort of um, just look into those articles because it, it could be pretty daunting to read a 12 to 15 page article and expect to remember a lot of those things. That's not really the point. So um, that's something I just wanted to mention. And in addition to reading um, an article, you should be reading things like Watkins, Crozier, Prism, and McLamory. So I think, again, relating to the firsthand experience you experienced that day to something new. Uh, if you go back home and you read up on a chapter on something you learned that day, it becomes, again, more digestible. It, it, it's an easier learning method. Instead of just trying to casually read through walk-ins and trying to expect to remember, let's say, all of the pediatric section. It, that, it's, it's pretty hard to do that, you know? Um, so trying to just learn something from that day and applying it to what you're reading that day, easier. Uh, the fourth point being YouTube. Use YouTube. I, I, I remember Diksha telling me that she was here's an example she wasn't able to put on a wound back properly um, and this was the middle of her fourth year and the best way she learned it actually was um, watching a YouTube video a YouTube video on it and learning what to do uh, if presented with the opportunity again and she was and she was able to do it um, yeah sure you get critiqued on your handling skills and that's the whole point of externships is to get critiqued and handle it but if you can come in with some sort of knowledge base a little bit and using YouTube as a resource that makes you look good and it makes you look um, like a superstar in my opinion. Um, the fifth point being um, getting ready for surgery. I think 
you'll always be trying to get ready for surgery and there's a lot of resources to get ready for surgery but i think the two big ones that i mainly used was mcglamories and easily um at the beginning i was using a lot of mcglamories and mcglamories is great but for me it was a little bit too much it was overwhelming with a lot of information so one of the residents actually introduced me to easily and one of my good pals who i met on externships actually gave me easily uh, the book and I was able to read that and I thought that was way more straightforward and it was a quicker way for me to just get all the information down at least the night before uh, the surgery so that way I was prepared in addition to learning about the surgery two more things learn about the instruments I think learning your instruments is key because whenever a doctor is asking you for an instrument or if the scrub tech is busy and they need an instrument off the table you can gr quickly grab it if you know the instrument so that makes you look really good in the OR as well as if you cannot learn your instruments or you cannot learn about the surgery most importantly know your anatomy I don't know how many times what I've been asked to like sort of visualize something and, and recognize it and tell the doctor what it is you need to know your anatomy we're podiatrists at the end of the day we're foot and ankle specialists so whenever we're looking at a body part or a particular area we should know the anatomy and why we're at least fidgeting with that part of that structure i think it's important to really know that because you will be asked that guaranteed in surgery so know your anatomy learn a little bit every day and make sure you stay on top of it the sixth point here being board vitals and crozier flashcards i would say start those early as early as you can um so for Crozier flashcards, I waited towards the end and I was doing 50 to 60 flashcards a day and that was a lot to take in, especially as you're doing externships, preparing for surgeries, academics. It, it was a lot to go, a lot to do during that time. So you want to make sure you get on top of this um, in the beginning. So I know one of my buddies in externships was doing five a day and he was doing that at the end of his third year. And he, at the end of, let's say the six months he was doing this for, he knew it inside out and he could just repeat it. So it was very, it was a very good technique that he was doing. Um, and he also started, and this is my other point, board vitals. He did board, he started doing board vitals at the end of his third year, beginning of his fourth year. And he was doing at least 10, 20 questions a day. And it added up because board vitals, if you guys don't know, there's I, I believe a thousand plus questions. and it's not about just getting through the question it's about understanding why you got it wrong understanding the explanations and that takes time and you really want to get those down because um, that will just help you be a better test taker when uh, when you take your boards part two and you want to start that early I started it towards the end and I completely regret that that was a bad decision of me and thinking that you have all this time on your weekends to just do whatever you can enjoy your time, sure, but time management is key here. I, I really still think time management is very important during your fourth year, and there's a lot that's gonna be going on in your fourth year. So try to use that time accordingly to help you benefit as you get towards interview and board season. Um, and the seventh point here being uh, read walk-ins in PRISM. As I mentioned before, um, reading walk-ins in PRISM if you want to read it casually and you want to get through those books, you can, totally fine. I tried doing that very hard. I kept finding myself having to read the same chapter over and over until I try to memorize it or get it down. And that was pretty hard versus it, whenever I was presented with a pathology that day in, in clinic or surgery and I wanted to learn more about it, again, using walk into prison um, as well as using a uh, Crozier, uh, I call that that trifecta, and using all three and, and reading from each chapter on that particular pathology you saw that day was a great way to really solidify what I learned that day. So I think doing it that way helped me personally. It probably will help you too, um, but that's just my advice on those things. Um, so that was the first seven points of um, some of the things that we will be talking about in this series to help you guys be excellent externs. Um, but with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you guys like or subscribe to this video. It means a lot to us. And if there's anything else you guys 
have additional comments on with some of the points I talked about today, please leave it down in the comment section because that will help future students moving forward. Um, uh, anyways, uh, if you guys have any other questions as well, please shoot us a message on Instagram at the podiatry journey or email us at the DPM journey at gmail.com. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe out there. Pod Squad signing out.